The only life that we are certain about so far in the entire universe is on planet Earth. Whether that life is intelligent is, let's say, arguable. But anyway, it's not surprising that we're tirelessly searching for life on other planets. So far, they've discovered more than 4,000 of them. But what's even cooler? NASA has compiled a new list of 24 planets that aren't just Earth-like, they're better. The conditions on them are so good that they're more comfortable than on our planet. So let's examine some of them. KOI 5715.01 Hmm, let's be coy, shall we? <laughs> this wonderful planet is in the constellation Cygnus. And why is it so wonderful? Well, our sun is a yellow dwarf. And sorry sun, even though you're not bad at supporting life, there are some stars that can do it better. Nothing personal. The planet Koi 5715.01 orbits near an orange dwarf. Orange dwarfs are stars slightly smaller than our sun and have a little lower luminosity. Uh, did you like the alliteration there? Anyway, don't worry, it doesn't mean we're going to live in complete darkness. In fact, if the planet is found closer to the sun and it has a thicker atmosphere, it may even be lighter and more colorful than on Earth. Now, our sun has a very short lifespan. Right now, it has 7 to 8 billion years left to live, a little longer than Earth's age. But orange dwarfs can live from 45 to 70 billion years. This is great not only because we'll be able to hang out on this planet longer, but also because the planets around these stars have more time to form life. Now, ideally, we would need to find a planet next to an orange dwarf that is about 7 billion years old. It's very likely there will be at least some organisms there. Koi 571501 is about 5.5 billion years old. Yeah, it may not seem mature enough, but that's okay, neither do I. Our Earth is a billion years younger, and that didn't stop us. The planet is quite close to its star and is in a habitable zone. One year there lasts 190 days. Imagine going to elementary school and already getting a driver's license. <laughs> it's almost two times larger than the Earth. The average temperature there is 52 degrees Fahrenheit, which is slightly less than ours, 57. But it mostly feels warmer there because strong gravity helps it hold on to heat in the atmosphere longer. It's a little too far away though, like 3,000 light years from Earth, which is about 18 quadrillion miles. Yep, better bring a really big lunch with you. Koi 3010.01 This planet is found next to the star Koi 2010. This planet sounds like a very pleasant world. The average temperature on this planet is 67 degrees, so a little warmer than ours. But that's a good thing. Scientists believe that on a perfect planet, the temperature should be just about 10 degrees hotter than on Earth. The more heat there is on the planet, the more comfortable it is to live there. Also, the higher chances of developing life. The radius of this planet is nearly one and a half times larger than Earth. There's some atmosphere, although we're not yet sure about its composition. But it's probably like the Earth's. Scientists think that we'll find an ocean there, and it can cover up to 60% of the surface, which is also cool. In a perfect world, water and land should be distributed more evenly than on our planet. A little more land means a little more territory and resources, right? But listen, this planet is actually very similar to the Earth. The semblance is so striking that scientists believe we have an 84% chance to find life there. Of course, not necessarily an intelligent life, but at least some animals. Wouldn't that be cool? Now, what do you think they could look like? Hmm, very Earth-like planet, but with stronger gravity. Well, if someone lives there, they're probably big but have a small height and strong little legs. Sounds adorable and scary. But we won't be able to find out the truth anytime soon. So far, for us, these planets are microscopic dots in space. We only have some dry, boring data about them and don't even know what they look like. We'll have to wait until we can find a way to get closer to these planets. Kepler 186f this is also one of the best candidates for having life. This rather cute planet was nicknamed the Earth's cousin because it does have a strong resemblance. Anyway, these two planets are like sisters, not twins. Kepler 186f rotates near a red dwarf. 
Red dwarfs are stars even dimmer and smaller than orange dwarfs. Yeah, they'll also live for a very, very long time, but their luminosity is also quite low. However, Kepler-186f is closer to its star than we're to our sun, so it shouldn't be too dark there. Well, at least not night-like dark. The sky on this planet is sure to be an unusual shade of red, like sunsets on Earth. What do you think? Would you like to live on a planet with an eternal sunset? The size of this planet is about the same as Earth. Not bad, not perfect. Why so? Because the coolest planets are those that are bigger than Earth and have stronger gravity. Now you'll probably say, but wouldn't it be harder to walk there and even harder to get out of bed on Monday? <laughs> of course! But on the other hand, this planet will pull the atmosphere better. The atmosphere will be thicker and denser. This means more protection from the scary space stuff, more oxygen, and more heat. Not to mention the fact that the bigger planets have more space to settle. Awesome, right? But of course, the Earth's size is also an excellent choice. Another cool fact is that the tilt of Kepler-186f is about the same as ours. It means that there should be stable seasons and a normal day-night cycle. Do you know how important the tilt of the planet is? Let's look at Mars. Mars is also, in fact, found in the habitable zone of our Sun. But its tilt is very unstable, and as a result, the entire ocean that could have been on it once now completely dried up. Today, it's just a red desert, and there's no life there. At least not as far as we know. But you see how important these tiny details are? This planet is also quite far away from us, 490 light years. That's about 3 quadrillion miles. So yeah, we're just going to keep waiting for intergalactic travel. Kepler 62e and 62f These planets were called the most Earth-like before we discovered Kepler 186f. They're very comparable to our home. Kepler 62e is about one and a half times larger than Earth, and Kepler 62f is just slightly smaller than that. They're located in the constellation Lyra, which is about 1200 light years away from us. They both also orbit a red dwarf. One year on Kepler 62e lasts about 122 days, even less than on that first planet we talked about. Scientists believe that both 62e and 62f are sort of water worlds. Warm places mostly, or even completely covered with water. If there is land there, it's probably just some islands. Hmm, a world consisting entirely of islands. A fantasy dream for some, think Hawaii, and a nightmare for others, think Megalodon. But if you're a fan of ancient marine animals, just imagine how gigantic they could be there. Still, there are many things we don't know about this planet. Does it have a surface? What about its composition, density? One day, maybe we'll be able to answer these questions. And so, that's it for the super-Earths. Of course, the original list is much longer, and you can go check it out on the internet. Now, the best thing about all this is that these are planets that are better than the Earth. But we also know thousands of other exoplanets that are just close enough to ours. And the odds are, a few of them have at least some form of life. But they're very, very far away, so we have no way to check it out right now. Perhaps, down the road, we'll find some cool creatures on many of them. Among all the planets of the solar system, our Earth is unique, since it's the only one that has developed life. But what if we got a competitor? What if a second Earth appeared out of nowhere? Then there would be two different scenarios. The first is the destruction of both planets, and the second has an unexpected but pretty logical ending. But let's start with the catastrophic scenario. The second Earth with the same conditions could only exist if it received absolutely the same amount of sunlight as our planet. The orbit that our Earth follows is perfect for getting the necessary amount of solar heat. If we were a little further away, the entire surface of our planet would resemble Antarctica. And if Earth were a little closer to the Sun, we'd all live in a huge desert inhabited by very few living beings. So, for the second Earth to be identical to ours, it would need to follow the orbit of our planet. Two massive objects can exist close to each other. The union of Earth and the Moon is a great example. But 
If the second object was as heavy and huge as our planet, there wouldn't be enough space for both of them. The gravity of two Earths would be a huge problem. The two worlds would collide because they would be pulled toward each other. This process would last for hundreds of millions of years. And in the end, the two planets would transform into one giant world. And their remnants would be flying around the newly formed planet, resembling the rings around Saturn. Or one of the planets would push the other out of its orbit. In this case, one of the Earths would hurtle toward the Sun and burn like a match in its atmosphere. It's also important to remember that Earth is moving at a speed of 67,000 miles per hour at all times. This is more than 80 times faster than the speed of sound. And now, imagine two huge planets that are flying toward each other at such a speed. Even a microscopic organism living in the mouth of a volcano wouldn't stand a chance to survive the collision of two Earths. Even the moon would be torn to pieces by the blast wave. But let's imagine that Earth's twin is following another orbit, somewhere between Mars and Earth. Even in this situation, people's lives would change forever. By the way, the theory that Earth might have a twin appeared long ago. Scientists of the past believed that the second planet could be hiding on the opposite side of the Sun. Thanks to modern technologies and astronomy, we know this theory isn't true. Otherwise, our telescopes and other equipment would have already caught some signals from this planet. Scientists study space objects thousands of light years away from us, so they would definitely notice another world in the neighborhood. But anyway, let's imagine that the second Earth does exist, and we've discovered it recently. The entire field of astronomy and astrophysics will immediately receive hundreds of billions of dollars in funding. The study of Earth's twin will become a priority goal for people. Experts will put forward hundreds of hypotheses about what the second Earth looks like and what's happening there. The planet is almost at the same distance from the Sun as we are. This means the weather must be the same there. Soon, scientists find out that Earth's doppelganger has liquid water and continents. But they aren't like ours. Their shapes and location are different. Most likely, life exists there too. But what is its origin? There's a hypothesis that life on our planet appeared thanks to amino acids brought here by a meteorite. It's highly improbable that the same thing happened to another world. Life most likely emerged there in a completely different way. Perhaps the fish didn't get out of the water on that planet, and the first intelligent creatures appeared in the ocean. These could be amphibians with scales and fins, or octopus-like monsters with huge tentacles. Fish on the second Earth could have come out of the water and grown limbs. But what if they didn't like walking on the ground? Then, this world might be inhabited by intelligent bird people. Or, life could have originated deep in the soil. Then evolution would create humanoid moles or highly developed worms. To find out for sure, scientists send a rover there. A similar mission to Mars was a success, so there shouldn't be any problems with this one. People on Earth are waiting. What will the rover find on the other side? It will take several years for the ship to get there. Strangely, two days after the launch, it returns. But wait, this is not our space probe! All this time, the inhabitants of the second Earth have been watching our planet too. At one point, they also sent a probe. It's made of the same materials as ours. It has a camera and a recording device. But people are worried because the rover looks similar to a mechanical spider. Can it be that giant tarantulas live in that world? Scientists understand that we need to communicate. We send our guests a radio signal with some information about our civilization. They catch this message and send their own. It contains strange symbols that resemble scratches. Linguists all over the world are trying to decipher it. Meanwhile, astronomers send the guests a recording of human speech. A few days later, our satellites catch a message from our space neighbors with their voices. Scientists are about to play the recording. The whole world is listening with bated breath. And it's a growl. A terrible, an absolutely incomprehensible growl. It has pauses and an unusual rhythm, but it's nothing resembling human speech. The whole planet is panicking. All countries are preparing for an invasion. The most important thing now is to build shields to protect the planet. No one can decrypt the message. It's possible that our neighbors can't understand us either. People make a last attempt to establish some contact. 
we send a video to explain to our guests with the help of gestures and signs that we only want peace and collaboration. The answer doesn't take long to wait. Our satellite receives their video file. Scientists play back the recording, and it's shocking! We see dinosaurs in robotic suits! Life on the second Earth has been developing in the same way as on our planet. But the infamous colossal meteorite didn't fall there. Over millions of years of evolution, dinosaurs have become sentient. In the video, they're growling and pointing with their claws at the picture of our Earth. Then they start growling even more loudly and… is it laughter? The recording ends. People consider this the announcement of the invasion. Several years have passed. During this time, scientists have exchanged messages with dinosaurs several times, and it seems we're beginning to understand them. It turns out that the reptiles also want peace. They say that their planet was once inhabited by humanoids similar to humans, but a massive flood wiped them away. Dinosaurs managed to survive and evolve into intelligent beings. It will take many years before people set foot on their planet. And when this happens, humanity will feel relieved, realizing that we're not alone. But what if there was no intelligent life on the second Earth? People would also be happy. We would know that we'd always have another home. Perhaps we'd start exploring Earth's twin right away, or begin mining its resources to replenish ours. In any case, our lives wouldn't change immediately, because that land would be too far away from our planet. Dozens of generations would pass before people begin settling on the second Earth. Our homeland planet would be losing more and more resources, so everyone would want to move to a new world. In the beginning, only the richest would be able to do it. But with time, space travel would become cheaper. People would probably invest a lot of money to build a paradise on the second Earth. If this happened, we'd be visiting this world during our vacation to breathe fresh air and enjoy nature. In any case, the human population would grow. This means that sooner or later, the second Earth would become as loaded as the first one. And then, people would start searching for a new home among the stars. By the way, if any life exists on a planet similar to ours, it's likely to look like octopuses. There's even a theory that octopuses came to Earth from some other world. Any animal has several evolutionary stages of development. For example, elephants and mammoths descended from one common ancestor five to six million years ago. Looking even further, almost all mammals evolved from one ancestor they shared with reptiles. Each species has been changing over millions of years. But not octopuses. They suddenly appeared on a family tree. From the point of view of evolution, squids would have to evolve into octopuses millions of years from now. But look, they're already here. Besides, octopuses are incredibly smart. Their genetic code is much more diverse than the human one. They may be visitors from another planet that is similar to ours. But of course, this is only a hypothesis. Whoosh! Your spaceship is almost there! Thanks to the latest technologies, you can now travel to any planet in our solar system faster than ever before. And we can finally visit other planets completely safely. You applied for a space tour, and now you're on a ship with your guide, astronauts, and a couple of other passengers. First stop, the smallest planet in our solar system, Mercury. It's only a third of Earth's distance to the Sun. The view is going to be spectacular. As soon as your ship lands on the solid surface of this rocky planet, you see an endless universe, stars, passing comets, and the Sun, three times bigger than we see it from Earth, with no clouds to interfere with the view. There are no moons. Mercury and Venus don't have any. You try to move, but because of your spacesuit and reduced gravity, it feels like you're on a trampoline in a slow-motion movie. It's not safe to come here during the day. On Mercury, it lasts almost 59 Earth days. Although your spacesuit keeps you safe, temperatures can get pretty extreme. During the day, they go up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. There's no atmosphere to keep the heat, so temperature during the night can drop down to minus 290 degrees. That's why Mercury isn't the hottest planet, even though it's closest to the Sun. Venus is the second closest, but it has an atmosphere that retains the heat. You're safe in your special spacesuit, but it will still be really hard to go through such drastic temperature changes, so you need to hurry. Mercury has weaker gravity because it weighs less than Earth, which means the gravity on Mercury pulls less on your body. If a person weighs 100 pounds on Earth, they'd weigh 38 pounds on Mercury. And you do feel lighter. 
Hurry up, we don't have much time! You hear your guide's voice in your spacesuit. He's standing next to you, pointing his finger. Look to your left, that's why we're here! Caloris Basin. Amazing! Mercury has such a thin atmosphere, there's nothing to protect the planet from asteroids slamming into its surface. It has the most craters in our solar system, which is why it reminds you of the Moon. And now you're there, looking at the Caloris Basin, the biggest impact crater in the entire solar system, formed almost 4 billion years ago by an object at least 60 miles long. You can see its rocky interior, filled with deep fractures and high, sharp ridges, surrounded by the highest mountains you can find on this planet, towering 2 miles above numerous lava vents. They used to be active. The other side that's hidden from the sun has tiny deposits of ice, which is the only form of water here, but you don't have time to see it. Mercury is only a temporary stop before you keep moving. As soon as you get comfortable on the ship, you see your guide approaching you. Eh, we can't stop on Venus, he says. Sometimes we can at least get closer to the surface, if not land and go out, but today, <laughs> the winds are crazy. They're usually a little over 220 miles per hour, and they keep the yellow or bright white clouds of the planet in constant motion. Volcanic activity formed the surface of Venus. 90% of it is solidified basalt lava, so it might not be the best place to visit anyway. Also, it has a dense atmosphere. While inside the spaceship, you get a video call on the special space communication system from your friend. She took some time off a little bit earlier than you did and went to Jupiter. Now Jupiter is a gas giant, so there's nowhere you can land. Also, the pressure is really strong. It squishes gas into a liquid. So Jupiter's atmosphere could crush any metal spaceship that goes through the colorful clouds like it's made of paper. Visitors mostly take day trips to see it, cruising in their spaceships, taking pictures from above. It's crazy because that planet is like a stormy whirlpool of wind, and it has the brightest auroras in the entire solar system. Your friend even saw the Great Red Spot. It's a giant oval-shaped storm moving in a counterclockwise direction. It was amazing! The red spot is four times bigger than Earth. But the real treat was Europa, Jupiter's sixth moon. Scientists believe it's young because of its smooth and relatively untouched surface. Europa is a big oceanic world with all the right ingredients for life we haven't discovered yet. They even offer you tours where you try to discover if there's anything waiting under a thick ice shelf. Visitors have to wear some special, extra-protective spacesuits because Europa receives huge amounts of radiation from Jupiter. And there's Io. Another one of Jupiter's moons, which is colorful and just the most beautiful thing ever. It's the place with more volcanic activity than Earth and has the most active volcanoes in our solar system. Over 400 volcanoes. 150 of them can erupt any time. Jupiter's gravity pushes the volcano's activity. It squeezes Io like a rubber ball, and that results in volcanoes. You wish you could have been there with her, but right now you're going towards your next location. Days pass by, and at one moment, you see Earth from a distance. You feel a little bit nostalgic, thinking about your friends and family. But after a while, you get excited as you see your next destination. Finally, it's the Red Planet. You hear the distant and muffled sound of the spaceship landing on the rusty surface. Everything around you is just a barren, giant desert. The wind is strong, kicking up dust. That's how those huge alien sand dunes are made. And the storm will come these days, they say. Billions of years ago, Mars had liquid water on its surface, lakes and rivers, maybe even life around or inside them. Its axis of rotation is a bit tilted, so Mars has seasons similar to those on our planet. When one hemisphere is tilted closer to the sun, it's spring and summer. The other hemisphere that's tilted away gets fall and winter. The atmosphere on Mars is way thinner than ours, so the planet can't trap that much heat near its surface. Air pressure on Mars is around 50 times lower than that atop Mount Everest. You arrive at the Space Hotel. Mars is the only planet with such hotels at the moment. On the other planets, you sleep in your spaceship, because they can offer conditions safe enough for people to stay there for a longer time. The staff of this hotel is great. They got used to tourists because Mars is the most visited location in our solar system. The food there is great, and you can't wait to eat it and get some sleep. The next day, you wake up at dawn to get ready for some skiing with your group. Days on Mars are approximately the same length as they are on Earth. It was snowing all night, but because of the dry, low-pressure atmosphere, snow never stays for too long, so you need to take a chance. 
Mars has amazing mountains and valleys, and those icy polar caps were so cool. Oh, and look at those volcanoes! The next day, a small aircraft specially designed to transfer you across the planet comes and picks you up for a day trip to Olympus Mons, the biggest volcano in our solar system. It's 16 miles above the surface, three times taller than our Everest. You land at the outer edge of the volcano. The peak is so high, it seems to go beyond the horizon. On the third day, you visit Velis Marineus, the iconic canyon system you could only see in pictures until now. Its network of chasms is amazing, five times longer and four times deeper than our Grand Canyon. At its widest point, it's 200 miles across. You decide to spend the next five days in the southern hemisphere. There's another hotel there where you can book day trips to numerous extinct volcanoes in the area. Everything is covered in dust in different shades of red, orange, and brown from iron rust. But the sky is dusty all the time. You even get caught in a storm once, so no one can leave the hotel the entire day. You look at the sun, which is a bit more distant than we see it from Earth. You miss your planet where you can walk around without special suits, feel the fresh breeze, swim in the ocean, or have coffee with your loved ones. There's one more place to see before going home. It's more dangerous and complicated to visit than the others. Cygnus constellation Kepler-16b, a planet that orbits two stars and actually has two sunsets, so you'll have two shadows. The planet is made of gas and rock, so it's going to be tricky to land. But the new adventure is waiting, and time to set off!